Now, one of the themes on Spring Watch this year is how is Midlands wildlife recovering after last summer's floods? Adult hares are really quite capable swimmers. In fact, they can swim for up to a mile, but the leverets, the babies, well, they weren't so lucky last summer and many of them were swept away and drowned. So to find out how the hare population has recovered and is doing now, we went back to one of the most notorious locations from last summer's floods. The Mulvans, a small slice of heaven on earth. But here we're also just a few miles from the Mythe water treatment plant, which was overwhelmed by flood water last summer, cutting the water supply to 140,000 homes. The floods were also a wildlife crisis though, swamping these fields in dark black flood water up to a metre deep. So this land was flooded presumably last summer? Yes, underwater for at least a month. What impact does that have on the hares? Well, everything evacuated. The hares, the adults must have got to higher ground. They can swim. So really? Yes, they can swim for up to a mile. Um, what about the young? The young, mm, very young, I don't think would have survived. Up at four, we've come to see if we can spot any hares, but it won't be easy because this farmland is also perfect for lapwings and they act as a very useful alarm system for local wildlife. But eventually, we do get lucky. Very lucky. I never felt magic there was a female in season um, and she was being wooed by four or five bucks. And what you saw was her boxing off unwanted attention from the suitors that she wasn't interested in. They may look like rabbits, but there are plenty of differences. Hares don't live in burrows, they live on the surface, and they prefer the centre of a field rather than the edges. What about the ears? The ears, they're gorgeous, aren't they? The yes, the ears, long, slim, dark, and there are some that say you can tell the sex of the hair by the way its ears sit down, but I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> Now, there is one difference between hares and rabbits that I actually hadn't heard of before. Um, it's not terribly pleasant, and it does account for some of the mythology about them. Hares, it appears, can make a noise. If a hare is wounded, it can let out this terrible blood-curdling scream, which is possibly partly why they're so associated with a lot of um, folklore and mythology. This blood-curdling scream, perhaps when it's been caught by the fox in the early hours of the morning under the moonlight. Our search has been lucky, and with the government aiming to double hair numbers by 2010, you'll have more chance of being lucky too. Now that noise that hares make when they're distressed or injured has been described to us as sounding exactly the same as the noise a small child makes when it accidentally traps its fingers in a car door. So I'm really glad to have seen them, but I really hope I never have to hear one.